Welcome back to Golf Simulator Videos. Today I've got another great video for you guys. We are back today with the Unicore IXO launch monitor. This is a high speed camera infrared based system that mounts up on your ceiling, uh, generally in between about a nine foot and 10 foot range. Uh, comes down, it actually uses uh, balls that don't require any marking. So it's the ball of your choice where I know a lot of people are used to seeing um, dots or some type of sticker placed on a ball. Uh, this unit, even though it is up on the ceiling, can actually use regular unmarked balls. So something cool. Today we're here with the View software, and I have Darren Hussey, Assistant Pro at Warwick Hills Country Club. He's going to assist us today and hit some shots. What we're going to do is we're going to show you the ability where you can actually do some bag mapping, okay? And you can do it in different ways. Today we're just going to take a set of irons. We're going to do pitching wedge through four iron. The goal today is really just to see if we have you know, any type of gap in between those irons and also really just to kind of find out those distances if you're getting those distances that you expect out of each club and it really allows you just to understand what you're going to need out on the course, okay? Now you could do this all the way from your wedges all the way to your driver. So you may find that you have a, a five wood in your bag and you might need a three wood. Um, you might need some, some different uh, wedges, maybe maybe a 50 degree and a 52, mm -hmm. maybe you need a, a 50 and a 54, you know, whatever it may be. But let's let's talk real quick about what you and I were discussing um, that, you know, if you're an avid golfer, you're golfing a lot, things can change with your clubs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so especially with your forged irons, which your, your better irons typically are a, a forged iron, uh, it's a soft metal and they can be bent. I mean, you put them in a in a uh, Mitchell machine or something, you can you can bend irons very easily. With that said, you hit enough golf balls. I hit a lot of golf balls. The irons will naturally bend. Just turf interaction, ball interaction, irons will bend. I typically check mine uh, about once a year, which is probably about two times less than I should I was per year. Say, you could probably be doing more. Um, huh? So this is going to be actually be very interesting to me because I have not bent my irons in two years. So. Wow. This will be it'll be interesting to see if if I have gaps and in if we do see our gaps, there's probably a good chance we're going to see them in the irons that I use the most. Yeah, they'll they'll typically add like I'll have added loft on golf clubs that I use the most as opposed to ones that I use sparingly. Some Makes more so sense. like my lower irons. Yeah. So, uh, and I've, and I've read a lot about that. I've had, uh, you know, a lot of different instructors and fitters, you know, mention things. Um, so you have a couple different things. One, your lie angle could change, right? Yeah. And then also possibly the loft of the iron mm -hmm. could change. I mean, all this soft metal could, you know, whether you're hitting the ground or whatever it could be, it can be bending, right? Yeah. So I actually, in, in my golf bag, um, I have, I just hand wrote a chart down oh, when, nice. when I got my clubs bent them or not bent them all but i but i looked at them all put them in the machine looked at all of them so now i have like a baseline of where my clubs are so it sits in my golf bag at all times so when i do go and rebend them or recheck them at least i at least have some sort of guideline so i can say this eight iron was x amount and look of where loft it is now. or lie angle and i looked at it now and it's two degrees differently something changed and yeah. i need to get it back to back to regular yeah it makes total sense and then the other thing like we were talking about when you do a procedure like this and go through your bag it's nice just to know the the distances i mean you were talking about how generally uh when you hit these shots you know you start off with maybe a fade that might go a little bit shorter and then you just your straight shot which is going to be that normal distance you're used to and then a draw where you're going to get a little bit extra distance yeah so that's how i that's how i personally uh dictate my distances there's multiple schools of thought. Uh, I typically try to keep the same tempo among everything. Yeah. So if I'm going to hit a little bit shorter, I'm going to hit a fade left to right as a right-handed golfer. If I'm going to hit my standard shot, it's just going to be a, obviously as straight as I can hit it. And if I'm going to try to squeeze some extra yardage out of it, I'm going to hit a draw. Yeah. That's how I. That's how I judge my distances based on on ball flight instead of me trying to change my tempo. Yeah, and then an amateur such as myself, I might get up there and swing as hard as I can. Probably not the best approach, but yeah. hey. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, it, I mean, to, to each their own. There's a lot of, there's a right. lot of like, people I like that approach. Yeah, a lot I, of people it works for. Maybe, I like Maybe that. choke down in the club. Some people like to choke down in the club. True, very I true. Try to, I try to change as little as possible, and I just try to kind of change my ball flight a little bit, and that tends to change my distance. I might pick up a little bit on that because I really like that approach. So, mm -hmm. um, I mean, let's get after it. I mean, we're going to start with pitching wedge, 
and we're going to do four clean shots. If we get a random one in there, we can just pull it out. It's no big deal. Um, but we're going to try to get four um, that don't have too much dispersion. And, you know, just like you talked about, we'll just do a fade. We'll do a straight shot and a draw and then maybe another regular one in there mm -hmm. just to get a grouping of four for each club. And then uh, we'll jump back in, kind of tell you guys what we're seeing and talk a little bit about it. And uh, I'm excited. Ready to get started? Yep. Let's go. Cool. Let's do this.
All right, guys, we're back, and uh, we hit four shots for every single club. Uh, Darren did an excellent job. I mean, I think we removed maybe a handful of shots. You know, yeah. what was it, like three or four three shots or, four, or something, yeah. which uh, I thought that was amazing. I mean, really fired it through. I hope you guys got a good example of being able to see all those, kind of did like a rapid fire for you, you know, so you could see every shot and see the data. And then now here we are to look at it. So a couple things I want to touch on really quick. So we didn't sticker up clubs to get club data um, because we just wanted to do this really quick. Um, Darren stopped in, we fired off shots really quick, we have the data we want, and I'm going to show you guys how I set this up really quick, and then we'll have Darren just kind of, you know, give us an overview of what he sees from the data really quick. So let me just show you inside the view software, you have a, an option right here to add session. Now when you do that, you go in and you add each club, okay, so I added my, my irons, I selected a premium ball, and I selected a color for each club and then they show up over here. And then what we did is, is every time we were hitting a shot, we just selected that club, okay? And by doing so, now you can see that all those shots we took are identified by a color and now they're forming those clusters, okay? And then there are actually several different things that you can do. We were, actually, we were taking shots obviously from behind. You can actually see that I have all of the traces up right now. Um, you can go into your groupings, all right? And then you can actually go into the shots for every single club. So you'll see that I'm actually changing every club and you can see that it has every shot. It shows you the data for every shot and then it shows the average down at the bottom for all of those data points and then also the max. So this is something that would be really useful to know that, hey, pitching wedge was averaging at 128. That farthest distance that I got was 138, okay? And then you can also go to session, which is pretty cool. That's a full overview of all the clubs, and that gives you all of the averages for the data points, okay? So for example, you'll see there on the pitch pitching wedge, the carry was 128 average, and you can go right up the list all the way to that four iron that was averaging 204, okay? So let me pull up the clusters really quick. And Darren, I just kind of want you to just give us your 30,000 foot overview really quick. If you just were to look up, we just took these shots, what's sticking mm -hmm. out to you? So, I mean, I don't think it takes a professional or an <laughs> expert to, to tell you that I have something going on between my seven and eight iron, the blue ring and the yellow ring. You yeah. notice every other one is touching each other. They're all in that same ballpark and you go between the seven and the eight iron and there's something going on i was surprised the minute okay. we went uh to yep. the to the group view I, I was like oh wow so, look at that so that was first things first that was the first thing obviously that caught my eye okay and i'll get into kind of other stuff that we picked up along the way but that's the first thing so i'm that kind of tells me i may have a a, a loft issue going on yeah with either the seven or the eight iron i'm gonna kind of guess it's more the eight iron but uh, which is a golf club that I use a lot. I use an eight iron a lot. When I practice, I use eight iron a lot. So there's a very good chance that, that there is a loft issue. So, um, like I said, at the beginning, I have a piece of paper. I don't know if you can really see yeah, that. We can read well. it off to them though. But, uh, so it's got all my clubs. Yeah. Nice. With, uh, loft and lie. This was done probably middle of the summer. I'd say June or July. Um, and in being in Michigan, they hadn't had a ton of rounds on them. So there was nothing wrong with them. When I checked them the first time, my, my clubs are two degrees flat, which means the toe is down a little bit. Okay. okay? I tend to, I tend to come in a little low with my hands. So I needed that toe to come down when I got originally fit for them. Yeah. Okay. So I'm two degrees flat with my irons. Um, and just so everybody understands, I mean, before, you know, launch monitors and everything, I mean, that's where you're using that like lie board, right? Yeah. And you're lie, seeing how well, that, that, that club's hitting. Lie board is, 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 is good. I prefer to take like a, a magic marker or a Sharpie, draw a straight line on the back of the ball and then hit that back of the ball. And then you can actually see that line on the face of the club nice. it can be tilted one way or the other okay and i think that's a little more accurate representation of nice of, i just remember live boards that's all i mean that's yeah that's kind of the original and and as things have progressed they found that the actual line on the ball that that transposes onto the golf club 
is a little more accurate representation. Very cool. And then obviously now with technology, I mean, more and more, you know, we've yeah. been we've been messing with all kinds of technology, measuring the club with, mm -hmm. you know, camera technology and radar and everything. I mean, yeah. obviously it's going to probably evolve to be the standard, but uh, just so everybody understood kind of what was going on. Yeah. There, so, so. What, so what you're going to see is, so basically, and I've got the numbers here, is you're looking at three to four degrees of difference between clubs. When you have your lower clubs, your three iron, four iron, five iron, you're at three degrees difference of loft. As you get into the, from the six to seven iron, we move into four degrees difference of loft. So when I look at my seven and the eight iron, that's going to be the first thing I look at. Am I going to have four degrees of loft difference between those two? Or mm -hmm. am I going to have three? Am I going to have five? I don't know. Yeah, because so and, and I, when I, I looked I really up there, that, that seven is bleeding into the six a decent amount yep. and the eight kind of hung back just a little bit there to the nine and yeah. you know so both of them were kind of stretching out and then sure enough there's so just that, by that first gap. first glance right now i'm thinking my seven iron i need to maybe bump it down a degree tone it down and my low. eight iron i might need to bump it up a half a degree or a degree the eight iron's pretty good actually in there i think the seven iron can shift back a little bit yeah. so that's the first thing i looked at okay so then obviously that's the that's the, the 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 one that stands out the most but after we kind of check checked it out a little bit if you notice um my misses are right and you said that the majority yeah, when, we, when we first pulled it up and I you know. know what's funny is i was so focused on the gaps yeah you want i would have now i don't know yeah. if i would have picked up on that yep. and then so everybody understands right now we're on this straight circle which really helps to show that gap well they actually have like a dispersion view which mm -hmm. is showing you these you know elongated circles or ovals whatever you want to call them the, the cluster changes and it really helps show dispersion better and sure enough and it look at out. where all those are yeah. it stands out stands so what out. a what a great observation you made on that so, so that was, okay so that what, was something i picked up quickly and like i said my clubs are two degrees flat which means toe down mm -hmm. i'm actually going to show a quick little yeah yeah you, you were you were showing me that it's um, really cool i want to show the viewers so, so um just to show you how sure important having is. loft and lies are so my my clubs when i got fit uh last year two years ago uh when these irons came out i was two degrees flat well golf swings evolve golf swings change in the course of a year year and a half yeah uh, i might not be two degrees flat anymore and a, a, an overly flat golf club will lead to shots that go right so we're going to show that real quick. Yeah, I put a T on the, the face of there we go. the golf ball, okay? So you can see that T right there. I've got this golf club set at perfectly flat right now. Okay, you see that T is straight down the line. Yeah. Now, if I bring this toe down, okay, essentially making this club flat, I want you to see what happens to that T. Look at that. I didn't change anything. I didn't open the face up. I literally just brought the toe down. Okay, see how that moved that ball right? And let's just go the opposite. My club is too, too upright, which means the toe is upright. Look what happened to that T. Okay, so that's showing the initial direction of ball from, from a, a lie angle standpoint. That's yeah. not correct. Obviously, you want to be here at impact. So by looking at this data right here, I've got a sneaking suspicion I might be about there. Yeah at two degrees flat i'm i'm going to look at my clubs and i'm going to try to probably bump it down and actually if you look at my seven iron the one in the yellow yeah those are pretty spot on so i'm going to actually look at my seven iron first and see if it truly is two degrees flat because if my seven iron is actually one degree flat and all the rest are two degrees flat i'm going to try to match up that seven iron but that yeah. was the biggest thing that stood out to me from a lie angle standpoint is the majority of my balls have missed right, which tells me my toe is hitting first, my toe is down, which is gonna cause the ball to go right. So not only did we get our distance gapping, where I see the difference between the seven and the eight iron, I've also picked up on some on some lying. It wasn't it even just, my intention by showing no, you the software no, and everything. Not, That's what's not, it's not amazing. Not mine either, so yeah. it, it is. It's, it's interesting how, how much quick data we got. Yeah, um, yeah I mean, you fired off those balls, from, it took 15 yeah, minutes of 15 that, minutes not even. And, yeah. And yeah. uh, you get a lot of lot of data, and and now I'm gonna now I'm gonna go to work on my clubs and make sure I have the proper fit. Yeah, eye opener. So be, before I wrap things up, I just want to uh, go into one screen really quick, this session screen, and let you look up there. 
and just look at the the average carry distance and wouldn't you say that the average carry was i mean is that roughly where you wanted to be other than maybe that little gap we were talking about and maybe fill the people in on that four iron a little bit yeah yeah i think that's uh i think that's pretty good um if you know i mean i i, I we look more at carry distance right now but when we talked initially i tend to hit draws when i try to hit the ball further because they tend to not have as much of a soft spin on them. So they'll actually roll out a little bit further. That's where I get a little dis distance difference. So you won't see a huge distance in the fly distance, but in the total distance yeah. on, on how they react on the greens, that's where you kind of see some more distance. As far as the four iron goes, so my whole set is the Titleist T100 irons, uh, standard loft, like we said, two degrees flat, toe down. My four iron, so, and, and then I have a hybrid, okay, a three right. hybrid. Right, which we didn't and, do that today. And just yep. so everybody understands, we, we were a little, uh, you know, had some time constraints, um, and we did this really fast. We'll, we'll try to do another one, but really you can do your whole bag. And you can mm -hmm. see, just like I said, and whether you have a hybrid, what whatever woods you have, you can only have so much in your bag. Yeah. Maybe you need to take from a five to a three wood or vice versa or whatever maybe, or there change some, your hybrid up. There is some playing around. So I'm gonna just quickly explain what I did with my four iron. You'll notice that there is a little bit of a bigger gap between the four iron and, and, and the five iron. Yeah. Uh, and that was on purpose. So my, my three hybrid is, is 240 typically. I'd probably fly at 230, roll out to 240. So if I have 240, I'm pulling out, I'm pulling out my three hybrid. Well, my four iron from the T100 set was total distance of like 215. And that was about all I can get out of it. Um, yeah, total, so in terms of total. in in comparison to the five iron, it was it was pretty good. Yeah. But in comparison to the three hybrid, there's way too big of a gap. There's so I wanted gap. to bridge those gaps a little bit. So what I did is I actually put the muscle back uh titleist four iron in there so it's a it's a lot actually has a little more of a ting sound to it it's just a it's a different it did sound club. different it's and i'm different... sure they were able to hear that yeah yeah, yeah if, you, if sure. you guys you know want yeah. rewind and and listen to the difference between that five and that yeah. four i tried to get a microphone close for you you'll probably notice yes. I, I could hear it so that four iron is actually not a t100 it is actually the muscle back four iron and you'll notice that i went from 215 with my t100 obviously we can't see that here because i didn't hit it right but i went from the 215 total distance to 221 to 225 somewhere in there which bridged that gap to that three hybrid what a difference so that was that was the idea so i think it's important that 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 people play around with their golf clubs don't just take a, a set off the rack and and think that it's the right set play right around and and throw different wedges in there and find out what, what works best for you because i do a lot of experimenting and and even if it means throwing a random four iron in there yeah um to to bridge a gap well and as this technology becomes available guys i mean the unicor ixo system i mean this is a system that you saw me get shipped to my doorstep I installed it in a matter of less than i don't know it was probably like an hour and a half less than two hours and all you have to do is start firing off balls, you know, get a local coach, uh, share the information with them. It's very easy to share all this data with them. You can just hit the balls and and, uh, and share it with your coach, you know. So obviously with COVID and everything going on right now, I mean, hey, there's more virtual stuff going on, yeah. you know. So you can contact your local PGA professional or hook up with one online and, uh, you know, use the technology that's out there and, you know, understand get your, it. yeah, understand it, get your bag fitting a little better and, uh, you know, be able to, you know, hit more greens without either flying over or coming short, whatever yeah. it may be. Right. Yeah. It's a, it's a hard enough game with, uh, golf clubs that are fit for you. Right. Yeah. No, <laughs> so no kidding. Don't it's play a good... set. Don't play a set. That's not, for <laughs> that's you. a very good point. Well, I really appreciate you spending the time with us today. Yeah, I mean, no this problem. was a, an eye opener for me. Um, you know, I really think that we were able to utilize the software mm -hmm. more than I have today, you know, I have in the past, you know, today. So, um, I appreciate it. And I really want you guys to comment below and let me know what you think. Ask questions. We're here to answer them. Um, as always, I appreciate you guys tuning in. Let me know what you'd like to see next. This is one more example of something that people have been reaching out, you know, asking to see more of the Unicor IXO and the VIEW software. And I think this was a great example. So yeah, definitely comment below and let me uh, know what you'd like to see. And we'll talk to you guys soon.